technology working look how it works when look it wants this to work. works <laughs> oh hey manda's here now too she Mar did. Mar this, is, this is manda's first ig live yay, yay! yeah first ig live <laughs> <laughs> she did it we did it and it was smooth sailing that's perfect <laughs> <laughs> okay I, I do have to say y'all like this is my t-shirt today. You hey, gotta represent. And I was thinking, I was like, oh, I don't have a I don't have a UPM t-shirt. I need one of them. We gotta we're gonna get you some swag tomorrow. We got you. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Yay! Yay! <laughs> uh well thank you everybody for uh for joining us today. Um I'm Liz Suck. I'm with um Oakland Rising and um I'm really excited to to talk today to Kyla from um, Urban Peace Movement and Amanda from Courage, Communities United for Restorative Youth Justice. And you know, this week there's a few events that are happening and we really wanted to talk about um, why democracy and like a true democracy and equitable democracy, how do we do that with the youth, right? Because ultimately um, that's who's gonna lead us um, into the future. And so we're gonna talk about that. But before we get into that, um, I want us to everybody introduce themselves, but we always ask two questions on Monday meals and we, you know, it's Monday meals because um, I grew up in a movement where um, I talked around, we just sat around and we talked about what's happening in the town, what's happening in the movement and like the work that we're doing and the things that we're faced with um, and how we're going to, how we're going to um, win our liberation, right? By like sitting around talking around lunch around drinks and eating together and talking with each other. Um, and so that's where this comes from. Um, and so ask two questions. One is, what are you having for lunch? Hopefully you're eating lunch. What are you having for lunch? Oh, is that a direct question? Yeah, yeah both of you. <laughs> what are you having for And for those who are joining, um, make sure that you um, add what you're having for lunch too in the chat. Let us know. That you're eating too, because I want to know that people are eating. I'm a mama, so I need to know that people are eating. You know, I appreciate the reminder. Cause I actually was going to make my lunch. <laughs> but I did have a, a good and healthy breakfast. Trying to uh, do better at eating more, because that's one of those things like, I've noticed as I'm older. Definitely need to eat in the morning. <laughs> yeah. What did you have for breakfast then? I had just a sandwich. Yeah. Oh, nice. Ooh, someone's having vegan wings. I need to get some of those. That sounds good. <laughs> that sounds I'm, really good. Yeah. That's it. But I can't. I can't scroll through them. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot. Just, just sit here and talk with us, Manda. Okay. When you get, when you get used to it, then you'll be like, oh, I know how to handle all of this. But just, just chill with us for now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> How about you, Kyla? How, what are you having for lunch? So I actually, yesterday, I made a promise to myself it's the last time I'm eating out for the rest. <laughs> so, uh, trap kitchen, I had like a little shrimp and fried mm. salmon with some fries mm. and some mac and cheese. So it was a leftovers today. And now no more eating out. <laughs> <laughs> I got to support my pockets now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but that trap kitchen's hella good. It's so good. It is so I, good. I was eating it and just being like, Kayla, do you want to just make today your last day or tomorrow your last day? <laughs> <laughs> There's always another day that can be the last day. <laughs> right? <laughs> um, 
I wonder what it looks like to just like be like once a week, you know? Right. It's hard. <laughs> oh, but somebody's having pancakes for late, late breakfast. That's great. I'm having leftovers. I'll eat it after we're done. But this is my soup that I made. It's got, mm -hmm. it's um, Korean. Uh, it's a soybean, soybean um, paste like soup with um, mustard greens, collard greens, tofu, and some radish. Mm -hmm. I'll have that with my rice and my kimchi. Yeah. Yeah. So super healthy. It's one of the things that my kids really love. So I made a giant pot of it and now they're sick of it. <laughs> they're like, can we stop eating this please? Mom? <laughs> um, <laughs> so the other question that I ask everybody too is um, I ask, what are the ways that you're nourishing yourself, right? Whether that be your mind, your heart, your spirit, like, cause I don't like to look at self care as being like something that you do, um, that you just do once in a while, right? Like you make time for, but what are the ways that you like live and embody a nourished life every day? How about you start, Kala? Okay, um, so for me, um, I actually just recently moved, so I'm in like a new space. So I've really been trying to be intentional, intentional about like keeping my space in my mind clear. Um, Cause the more you like have things cluttered, the more you just like, I feel like I'm all over the place. Mm. Um, so I've just been really intentional about, about like cleaning and just like making sure that's a part of like my self care, especially like my room, like where I lay my head, I want to make sure that at least that space is clear so I can sleep good at night. So that, and then I've been really working on like pouring positivity in myself, into myself. So I've been really focusing on my affirmations and really being intentional and careful with myself and mindful with myself because you can be really hard on yourself at times. So, yeah. I heard that. I heard that. Can you come talk to my kids about keeping their room clean? Yeah. <laughs> it took a while for me too. <laughs> When you realize you're paying your rent yourself, you'd be like, mm, maybe I should keep it clean. Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, so I should be charging my kids rent. Oh, that's you know, you know, baby. <laughs> How about you, Amanda? What are the ways you're doing um, to nourish yourself? Um, honestly, Kayla said I'm. I'm really trying to embody the same thing, like having routine, like up in the morning and like trying to have a good routine if it's sunny i water my plant I try to myself kind of would like to something small because i really would never consider myself a plant person i've killed every plant that i like growing up now like i'm on space um definitely like, be a little bit motivated trying to eat so the now to like i didn't have lunch but i had a good healthy breakfast that to me is like a coffee, it's protein. Um, yeah, so, you know, it's not I actually, you know, because self definitely like, like something hard. A lot of people, I feel like I learned like later on in my life, like something, if I would have had that I know now when I was young, it probably would have helped me with like coping, you know, so. Mm. But yeah, that's that shit's hard. Speak my language, but it's hard. Yeah. I heard that. I heard that. You know, it, it's like a daily practice. Like I think when we think about it as practice, as opposed to something that we just do um, once in a while, and that when you practice, you know that you're not going to do it right or perfect every time, right? That. I'm pretty sure Kayla's room is not spotlessly clean every day, right? And um, but that you know, when we do that every day, then we're we're adding to to that bank within us that 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 feeds us and keeps us keeps us whole. So I appreciate you both. Um, well, tell me, tell everybody like who you are and where you what you know what organization you're with and. How you came? How you came to be there? Um, Whoa, maybe Caleb. 
That's okay. that's loaded. Okay, let's just start it with your name and like where are you from? Like what's your org? <laughs> <laughs> let's do that. Yeah. Um, I could go. Um, hey y'all, I'm Caleb. Um I'm from originally from Southern California, but I've been in the Bay for the past like going on nine years. Um, and um I work with Urban Peace Movement. I've been involved with Urban Peace Movement since I was about like twenty one. So solid six, seven years now. Um and um, I've, I've been in love ever since with the organization and the, our members and the people that we work with, our partners. And um, yeah. I love it. I love it. Amanda, you're like the, one of the newest staff at Courage, right? I am. I am. Um, I've only been at Courage probably a month and a few days ever. I have known Courage for... Uh, well, not just like, I mean, I'm Courage, like, Courage, like, the folks from Courage, like, that I've come to grow as, like, my chosen family about two years now. So, um, I met them through a tragedy, uh, but, you know, like, through that, a lot of blessings came came through, and um, people who I've actually knew, like, maybe in 2012 that I had in actually like it's crazy how life works because you know someone that actually knows someone that knows somebody and it's like well, you know that person well like <laughs> or you know and maybe we did like but didn't you know and so um yeah so i'm with courage now organizer associate um so i'm learning to organize that's new um to me um in a way naturally sometimes i, I work young people in this um, position. I work with only like I met Kayla through my last job. Like Kayla and man, I'm like super happy when I found out I'm like oh. I know she was so excited, <laughs> Kayla. I was like, Kayla from UPM is joining us. She was like, Yay! Yeah. <laughs> like my sister. Like like we are really like family. Like Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> like so so yeah, so that's what I'm doing now. I'm also, you know, shout out to the DVB, DVB fellows, the Dream Beyond Bars. And I've gone into learn. They're teaching me. You know, it's a, a learning. I'm just the, the I'm just learning a lot. So that's where I'm at. That's where I'm. <laughs> and you, did someone just put in the chat? You're a powerhouse, Amanda. Oh, thank that's you. That's what you are. You're yeah. a powerhouse. Um, so, yeah, so, you know, today we're here to talk about, like, a couple of things that are happening this week, right? Like, June 7th is the primary election, and it's really important for us to be talking about the election because, um, and especially for members and for your base that are part of the two, your two organizations, but also just for us to know about in Alameda County, right? So, um we have a primary election, and uh, we're going to be voting to elect a few b pretty big, important positions, particularly that we've been watching is, um, and I also want to say that Courage and um, our Urban Peace Movement and Oakland Rising also are part of a larger coalition called the Justice Reinvestment Coalition, and we've been working on really trying to um, take accountability in Alameda County, especially around the district attorney and the sheriff's office on how they've been um, taking care of our people. Um, and, you know, the ways in which they're not taking care of our people, I should say. Um, and then, um, so on the election for June um, 7th, and usually um, the primary election is when um, these positions are generally voted on outright. Because in the past, we've um, the district attorney has always had nobody running against them, right? Um, Nancy O'Malley didn't have anybody running against them in 2018. Um, and, uh, well, in 2018, we had Pamela Price who ran against, for the first time, they've had somebody, um, had an opponent. Um, no one has years, run. Right? Say that again? I think it was like in 50 years. Yeah, in like 50 years, we haven't had anybody run up against the district attorney. And then the same with the sheriff. We haven't ever had yeah, um, somebody run against the sheriff's department. Um, you know, and uh, often the, dis the board of supervisor seats as well. So 
Um, the one that concerns Oakland is District uh, District Three, which was formerly uh, Wilma Chansey, um, who passed away um, earlier this year. And so um, they're they're going to try to fill that new that seat, and they're also filling District Five, which is um, Richard Valle's um, um, district. And the um, the superintendent of schools for Alameda County, right? And so those three, those uh, four seats are really important to us because the district attorney um, prosecutes and um, incarcerates our people and the sheriff um, does the incarcerating part of it, right? They do the arresting and they do the, the incarceration. And so um, these are really important because... Um, when we fund those things, we're not funding things that we need, like mental health, health services, education, um, to the extent that we need it. And so this week, there's a couple really big events. And I know that um, Urban Peace Movement, the, one, of the, uh, one of the ways that you all are doing that is you're going to be holding an event tomorrow night. And I'm really excited about it because I love, I love, love, love using culture as a way to engage people around around democracy and around around just like just getting involved in the movement so can you tell us a little bit about it and where like what was the idea behind it yeah so um tomorrow at lake mayor we'll be having town up tuesday we're gonna have some amazing performances we got kamaya uh, baby guest uh who else guapale and, and a lot more um, and the whole point of this whole entire uh, festival is one is just to educate our, our people and just letting folks know, like, you know, you have the power to to vote for these elected uh, um, officials. And a, a lot of times, a lot of people don't even know that these positions are up for election right. um, or they don't even think that, you know, they have enough say. A lot of people, especially like younger folks, when they think of elections, they only think about like the presidential elections or like the big That's elections, right. but That's primary right. is big too, because it, this is what impacts you the most. Like you need to make sure that these local officials reflect your morals, your values, reflect the, the community's morals and values and, and really make sure that they value our people. Because a lot of times people of color, we're always like X out of the box or we're, we're quick to be thrown under the bus. So just making sure that you, that folks are paying attention to the local elections and voting. And then also while doing that, turning up at the lake with our people ha celebrating culture mm -hmm. and celebrating us really. So um, yeah, please pull up. We got the link in the, the event break link at the chat and it's free. All you got to do is just register online answer a few, some small questions and then it's free you get to go and you get to turn up with some folks so you know <laughs> that's what i'm talking about right because i think that's one of the things i wonder too because um i think one of the things is that you can't move people if you can't move their hearts right, right. and i think you can't pe change people's minds until you move their hearts and so um you know culture really does that um like music really makes that happen and I think that there's like a whole, it's so great to see like the, I have to admit, I'm kind of old. So I was like looking at that lineup and I was like, oh, uh, you didn't know who was on there. I don't know. I knew like three of those people. I was like, and those are the people who are my age. I was like, oh. <laughs> I know DJ D Sharp. I know Guapole. <laughs> uh, I know Rocky Rivera. I was like, oh, who are these other people? <laughs> but, if, if, <laughs> but I was like, but I then I was like, okay, well, let me listen to their music, and it was just like, oh, this is, I know why they're here, <laughs> right? Because yeah. that's that's a part of it, right? Really yeah. Fun. Honestly, I really like the lineup. I think that's like the perfect way to to use and not not use them, but it's in collaboration, like with music, because like music and, and hip hop is like such a big thing, like political conscious music and then people you know like that's a real thing and you can actually reach more people that way because everyone listens to music you know what yeah. i mean and if you're a favorite rapper or you know female rappers too that can actually do movement work and figure out how to do that like that's cool you know i yeah. feel like we really need that more than ever you know? yeah and, and music and art is just it's such a powerful it's a powerful source It's you know, it, it's a power It's like politically it could be powerful culturally. It's powerful. And I think it's just amazing that young artists like 
like, cause even I'm a little, a little old for some of the folks, but <laughs> I was just like, <laughs> Ooh, I thought I was old. old. You're not old. Oh, okay. You're not old. But, but I'm old like, school, so like, I tell you though. Because it just feels great to know that young folks are just really out here trying to create awareness and educate their community and their people at the same time and, and spread love and just, you know, empower folks. And that's all what it's about is just empowering, especially young people, because um, so many times we're, you know, we're discouraged to feel empowered. So I think it's important that they're going to be there on the lineup. That's right. You know, and I, I what one of the things about that, too, is like, um, I think a lot of people tend to think that um, that artists and, and hip hop artists particularly and rappers um, are not like educated enough or aren't tapped into what power could really look like or, you know, but they're, that's like the root of hip hop, right? Comes from a time and a place and a, and the, the intent and origin really comes from like speaking about the conditions that people live in. Right. And so that's why when I was listening to the music, I was like, Oh, this makes a lot of sense because they're talking about exactly what we're trying to, we're, we're trying to change. Right. Like the impacts of incarceration, the impacts of criminalizing our communities, like the violence of like, you know, the state not creating conditions for our people. Right that then create more violence in our communities. Like, like that, that to me is like, is one of the reasons why it makes more sense because they're speaking to people's conditions and like the opportunity to, and again, like voting is not the end all be all y'all. It right. does not save the world, yeah. but it gives us an opportunity to like participate in a, place where power lies and that's really important for us yeah definitely and yeah. also just educating folks to follow up on like who's going to be the da so if something happens we know who to hold accountable to that's right because um, yeah. there's so many times where like, something tragedy happens or something happens and people are just stuck because they don't know who to talk to or like where to go or who who do i need to talk to to hold accountable but the more you educate yourself, the more you know you have the power, even beyond the voting part. Like, we as citizens of, of this county have the power to hold these people accountable. And we need to know who these uh, head honchos are so we can let them know, you know, you got us messed up, figure it out, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's also leading to the other event, and you're getting a lot of love in the chat, but like, I wanna, um, cause it's totally on point. And I wanted to see too, um, uh, Amanda, because like I know Courage is the next day on Wednesday is doing another event, and um, it's really critical as well because y'all are going to do a forum to um, to talk to people, to talk to candidates, the right? actual candidates. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a uh, so it actually originally was going to be in person. Mm -hmm. um so you know maybe for the next election i think that's maybe in november we're probably going to go for that but we're going to do it virtually and to um the 18th um from four to seven we're i'm actually going to be i believe facilitating it um probably co seeing it with someone else so let's see kayla <laughs> yes um i'm a little nervous you know keep it all the way real but she's like I, you got it <laughs> You know, it's going to be because it's something different, you know what I mean? And I think that the good thing about it, so, you know, personally for me, like, what makes me comfortable more, like, about doing it is, like, it's going to be youth-led, so meaning, like, some of the questions that we're going to be asking the actual candidates, because all of the people who are going for Wilma Chan seat have confirmed and so we will have them there so just like I believe upm's even hosted some forums as well right and some women um, women league voters um have, have also um done some and so um we're going to be asking them questions that we've curated like from youth who've been impacted themselves and um we're also going to um the lady, her name is Elise Castro, going for the superintendency running against Monroe, who, as you know, is the one doing the school closures currently. So 
Um, we actually also invited her, but she hasn't confirmed yet to my knowledge. And so hopefully she um, is there Wednesday, but if not, then it would just be Elise and I um, and everyone else who's live streaming. So I actually don't know, Liz, if I was able to get you the link, but I can get you the link and the flyer and all that. It's also free through Zoom. Just can, and then that's super important because I think for me, like, it's crazy seeing me doing this now. And like Kayla, even like with y'all's event, like, I think that's really awesome. Like, I'm going to definitely try to come tomorrow and, you know, bring my kids. Um, but the education piece of it, because these positions do like affect this. And it's like, unless you've been impacted or know someone who's been impacted, then you know how important it is. And it's, so many of my own people are hard-headed about voting. I've even been hard-headed about voting. But as I'm learning more, right, like the whole point of like is educating us. If you know, then you'll be able to like push that information. Like, for example, Prop 17 is like if you're on parole, you're able to vote. Like not a lot of people know that. Mm -hmm. And it's like they pass these things and then they don't share it with the community because it's like to them it's a win, but they don't like for us it's a win, but they don't want to acknowledge the win. That's right. You know? And by they I mean like the system, people who have you know who, the, who can do bills and do legislative stuff. So um it's gonna be big. So I'm you know, personally, you know, I'm like nervous, but I know it has to be done. So <laughs> <laughs> it has to do it. If we ain't going to do it, who's going to do it, right? So, right. That's, right. That's yeah. right. And one thing I think that people need to know why it's really important about the Board of Supervisors, right, mm -hmm. is because there are five districts in Alameda County, and three of them are touching Oakland, and District 3 is one of those. The other thing that we need to know is that of the five um, there are three seats where the the super um, not the superintendent the board of supervisor has been in that seat for more than twenty years. Um, Keith Carson has been in his seat for thirty two. Mm -hmm. uh, Nate Miley has been there for twenty eight, I believe twenty nine, mm -hmm. uh, twenty eight, and um, and Richard Valle has been there for I think twenty, right? And Wilma Chan had been on on um, had also been on the Board of Supervisors for quite a long time, but she was always the lone dissenting voice, right? Sometimes Richard Valle would come on and vote with the people, but in general, like they, uh, this Board of Supervisors has continued to like give money to the Sheriff's Department. Mm -hmm. So at the beginning of at the beginning of um, 2020, when we all went into lockdown and we were all scrambling, trying to figure out how do I get tested for COVID? Where do I get health care? How do I get health care? How do I get, you know, where's this vaccine? Any of that information, mm -hmm. right? Um, the Board of Supervisors, rather than giving money, we have a huge surplus in Alameda County, rather than giving money to our health care system, decided instead to give $150 million to the sheriff's department. Because they were like, we need more funds. Like what? In the middle, in addition to their already hugely over bloated um, budget, they gave 150. The next year gave another 150 million, right? So they have given almost $300 million or more to the sheriff's department to continue funding them for things that they're not doing, including they have continued to have people die yeah. um, in the share at, at Santa Rita, right? They have continued to not take care of the people. They have huge high rates of COVID infection and death. So it's ridiculous to, to assume that the sheriff just does it on his own. He doesn't like come up with his budget on his own. He's not like, oh, just money falls out the sky and he just runs that shit, right? right. The right. board of supervisors sit down and they go, oh, yeah, actually, we want to give you money. We think that what we need in this county is more policing. What we need is more jail time. We need to increase our budget there instead of thinking about health care, which also I think people need to know is that the county is where all our money for mental health comes from, mm -hmm. right? 
all of our, uh, our county health care system, mm -hmm. child welfare services and children and family services and housing money and education come through the county. They don't come through, they, it comes down through the state or federally to our county first. Mm -hmm. And those services are either directly given by the county or they go out into our cities. And so that's important. Uh, Ms. Ms. Cordero, Cordero, 510 wrote, money for them to feed us is garbage and deny us medical. Exactly. Yeah, um, I saw so, someone put in the chat too, like term limits is important. Like I definitely. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And I think also just like the sheriff in the past has always, they always slide by. Like, I think like people don't know that they could hold them accountable too. Like we can, we can press and put pressure on them as well, especially in Alameda. Like how many unexplained in custody deaths have happened in the past? How many, five, 10 years, you know, like yeah. extremely. And like, like they get millions, millions to treat people like dirt yeah yeah and it's not just mil it's hundreds of millions like it's not like oh let me just break you off like two million dollars right like it's like hundreds of millions of dollars and they don't even have enough they don't even have they don't even have all this the they keep saying uh, we need more money because we need to hire more people but they have a hell of unfilled seats right they don't the job is not sitting there. And someone put in the chat, the uh, Board of Supervisors also have the power to hold probation department, district attorney, and the sheriff. And the district attorney and the sheriff are up for election. So that's important for us to remember. That's why this is, it's so critical, right? Yeah, I see um, mm -hmm. sometimes tra travel through like Dublin area and I see billboards of all kind of Sheriff Ahern everywhere. Um, and I actually think I saw one of the candidate forums. That's the lady that's running against him, Yesenia. Mm -hmm. Sanchez. Yeah. Yesenia Ch Sanchez is running, yes. Yeah, yeah. So, um, but it's just interesting. Like these people have had um, their positions for like, I've heard a name Miley when I was like, going like when I was younger as well like so I know he's been around for a while and that part of like because I hear the Oakland but then also like until I was doing more research about this it also like unincorporated area of San Leandro and Sherilyn Hayward it also reaches out over there too That's right. and mm -hmm. so um yeah like it, there's just so much stuff like where the sheriff police doing and and that side of you know doesn't get a lot of light either and it's like so much corruption like on the local level because of what they're able to do you know um super important that's right that and i love that you pointed that out because um unincorporated alameda county um like you said Ch cherry land ashland parts mm -hmm. of san leandro parts of hayward and Castro valley they don't have a mayor and a city council that create a budget. Their budget is underneath the board of supervisors. So the sheriff, the DA, and the board of supervisors that are in those districts, those are the ones who then provide the quote unquote services that they need, that they say they need in those communities. And so they're like, here, let me give you a backpack, but then let me also give you a handcuff so that I could take you to jail. Yeah, right, right. And it's just like even thinking about like areas like Cherry Lane and Ashland, like where it's like, like I see, sh I used to live in that general area and just seeing sheriff presence all the time. That's pretty intimidating. Or even just like, like them have wanting involvements in youth centers and like, we don't need you in our <laughs> community. Yeah. Our space. We, like, it's not going here. Like, yeah. We don't need y'all here. Right. And it's just like, that's, Money shouldn't go into punitive systems that harm us. It should go into into centers and, and community um, centers that like support youth growth, support youth leadership, mm -hmm. support you know up our streets, making sure folks are fed, making sure folks are supported mentally yeah. and physically and housed. Like we shouldn't be worried about sending hundreds of millions of dollars into a system that creates harm that's killing us that's separating families and breaking families apart like that's that right. should not be reality right that's right that's right and i love everyone's dropping in the chat like all different kinds of things that we need 
is that imagine what hundreds of millions of dollars per year could do for East Oakland communities. And then someone, you are listing off all of those things, Kayla, and someone wrote early childhood development. Imagine like if we were like, if we all that $150 million went into childcare, yeah. what right. would that do right. for our communities? Make a world of difference. World That's of right. difference. Yeah. Um, like the police and the and like the unincorporated areas, it's kind of like, they actually do community stuff too. I see them doing it all the time. And that's kind of hard. I think it's like a little bit hypocritical, you know, because just like you said, they handing you a backpack, but then at the same time they handcuffing you. But when they, so I think like with the money that they use and they try to reinforce positive stuff from that, it's, it doesn't come and then that did the recruitment for having youth be a part of programs that are ran by police. It's just, they're not going to have the right lens for it. It defeats the purpose of all the other community orgs that are doing the work and should be the ones like they probably use the youth center as an example to try to, you know, cause they wrote police pretty much took that over after must've been 2018 or 19, a little bit. That's right. COVID, you know, so it's just interesting you know, to see. That's just <laughs> and, you know, I think that when they do that, right, because they not only do they go here, give you a backpack, let me also give you these handcuffs, right? Like put these handcuffs on you is what they do is like, so if you come to this place and you're a good kid, if you don't right. do these things, you are a bad kid. Instead mm-hmm. of like looking at it and framing it like actually our system sucks and we're right. not providing enough services for you, but it's on you. It's on you as a good person. And if you're not a good person, you ain't going to make it in life. And like, I think the way they do that is so that they can dehumanize our young people, right? Yeah. They can dehumanize them. And so when they, when they lock our people up, our young people up, um, and when they kill them in the street, right? That that's a way to do it is to, so that they can be like, they deserved it because they weren't human. Mm Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They totally try to justify it. Yeah. Would you say, Kayla, my bad? No, no, no. I was agreeing. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's, I think that's like one of the ways that they do that, right? And so this is why I think the event that you're doing tomorrow, that Urban Peace Movement is doing tomorrow, is so great because it's like it humanizes people. It like, you know, it, it values their just being. And like creating a space that is like joyful, right? Because it's yeah. like music and art and culture and and like being in community with each other is so important. Yeah, no, definitely. And I think um, one thing I'm excited about, even just like the town, uh, the forum on Wednesday, is youth led, um, and it's like our young folks are so powerful. Especially, I don't know if it's in the water, but something about hey youth from the Bay, like the power that they have, (laughs) the voice that they're never afraid to use. Mm. Uh, It's just like the the impulsiveness and like the, I don't, I don't give a fuck. I'm going to speak about what I feel, how I feel. And you're going to hear me like there's something, there's something in the water out here that I just love. And I'm just like, so happy that, that even after the past hor- like crazy two years that the pandemic has put on our communities, like I'm just really glad to see our young folks out here continuing to to fight and continuing to spread awareness. And I'm just looking forward to the more young people that can see, like, hey, there's power in this. Like, let me let me get on board. Let me see what courage. Is doing. Let me see what Urban Peace Movement is doing. Like, I'm really excited about that. Oh, and the swag, y'all. Somebody put. <laughs> Oh yeah, are you- even though swag ain't cool, why isn't swag co- not cool? Am I That's am I missing I- something? <laughs> I was like, man, <laughs> I definitely need UPM swag. That hoodie, hoodie, some. <laughs> I need to get some of that UPM swag. What's up? Um, yeah. So you know, um, so I and also like what I love is that um, courage your forum, like, um, like. Uh, Kayla was saying is that it's all going to be youth led. So you're moderating, but yes. um, are, are other young people going to be involved in it too? Some of the dreams beyond bars folks. 
Um, so yeah, I'm hoping that um, we'll have I'll have a co-facilitator possibly. Um, we're like finalizing some of those last details this week, um, but we've been hosting some like focus groups with some of the life coach participants um, and the H4J um, youth, um, and like been curating some of the questions to ask. Like so, it's more directly from like their lens and their experience. Because even though my experience is one thing. And I'm honored, I'm like super honored to be given the, you know, position or role to facilitate this. Um, and it's also like my experience was like long time ago and things have changed. And like the young people who we're working with right now, like we reached out to some schools as well and got some input from some students. And so I'm hoping that, you know, it'll, um, it'll all come together, you know, naturally, but I'm super excited about it too. So. I love that. I love that. And I'm I, trying to be I at say, tomorrow's though. Real, I'm trying to be there tomorrow. Like, <laughs> it's not about having fun too. You know, you gotta have fun with it too. You know? yeah. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> fun is so important, right? Because if it's boring, no one's gonna show up. Right. <laughs> no one's gonna show up. And that's how, that's how our people roll. Like like you know around the world, right? Is that like the majority of the world are folks of color. And in those places, it's it's all about the food. It's all about the party. It's about the music, right? That's how we get people to come out. And um, Amanda, you said that things have changed a lot, but there's so many things that have not changed, right? True. Like no, the incarceration, yeah, yeah. like the, yeah. the violence, those kinds of things. Those things have not changed. But how we address it, how we talk about it, the words, I think, are the ones that's changed. <laughs> That's when I'm like, damn, I'm old. Um, yeah. <laughs> but I also wanted to drop one more event that's that's happening also Wednesday night. So go to, I pinned the um, registration for the webinar for Courage. And we'll also, we've been posting um, Urban Peace Movements. Earlier I pinned it for a second. But um, uh, the event for Urban Peace Movement, so if you can go to their IG, click on Urban Peace Movement. You'll find the flyer. The link is in their bio uh, for you all to um, to sign up to go to the Eventbrite and then show up at the lake. Really excited about it. Um, and on Wednesday, you know, this follows a weekend of some really, really horrible violence um, and racism that has happened. Uh, the start and end time for the Courage panel is, it starts at 4 p.m. To 7, I believe. Till 7, yeah. And um, so, as you all know, what um, over the weekend, there was a mass shooting um, in... Uh, you know, I have a hard time with that. Like, we say mass shooting, but... This was this was a 2022 live lynching, right? Um, of um, folks in a predominantly black community in Buffalo, New York, and I think uh, you know over the past two years we have seen just like a major increase of violence um, that have um, has been targeted um, towards black folks and our our black neighbors and community. And then also uh, there has, and it, it's, it's um, also really true to my heart because I know um, uh, it's also happening in the Asian community over the last two years, the increase of violence in um, outright like um, vigilantes who are targeting Asian people and uh, targeting black people in this really racist way. And everyone keeps saying hatred and I'm like, this ain't hate. This is a cis. Say that again. No, it's just bigotry. They just, it's, yeah. Yeah, but when we say hate, it just makes it like it's this individual thing, right? Yeah. It's like, I hate you. It's like, no, baby, this is not just about hate. This is about like an entire system that is set up to kill people, right? Yeah. Like right. language and words and all of those things like matter. And so, um, so on. Um, Wednesday night, go to the forum online and then come out to Oscar Grant Plaza because Anti-Police Terror Project, APTP, is holding a solidarity action. So come out there um, and join us at 7 o'clock. I'm going to be out there too. So I'll be coming from the forum, walk down the street from our office to, to that as well. So 
Um, so show up for that as well. Um, I just dropped um, into the chat the Facebook event. You can also go to Anti-Police Terror Project's Instagram and all of their social media as well to find out information to how and where to show up for that. Um, but thank you both. I really super appreciate you. This was so much fun, actually. This was really hey, fun. This is fun. This is fun. Yeah. Shout out APTP. That's what I thought. Hey, hey. Shout out to Urban Peace Movement, all the people that you all showed up with, all of the Courage folks that um, showed up today too, and all of the Oakland Rising um, uh, folks that also showed up. Appreciate you. This was the most lively chat that I've ever had for our Monday Meals IG Live event. Hey, that's yeah. fun. I'm talking. That's what I'm talking about. Like this is why we need more young people because when I have old people on here. It's boring. No one's chatting. <laughs> well, we have all the young people. People are like blowing up the chat. So yeah. mad love to you all. Love you all. Love for the work that you all do. Thanks um, for having me. And I appreciate you. So go to Urban Peace Movement. Go to uh, Communities United for Restore to Youth Justice Courage. Uh, check them out. Check out the events and vote on Ju Ju uh, June 7th. You'll get your, if you haven't gotten your ballot in the mail, Go to um, Alameda County and um, make sure you get your ballot. And then also check out um, our sister organization, Oakland Rising Action, for our voter guide there. So appreciate you. Bye Yay. tomorrow. See, see you tomorrow. Yeah, see you tomorrow, Kayla. Yeah, tomorrow, we're going to turn up part of our education. Then Wednesday, we're going to go to the forum. And then we're going to really get our education and really make sure these folks are aligned with our values. And morals. That's right. That's so right. That's right. Spot. That's right. Yeah. yeah. See, it's okay. all connected. All our work yeah, is connected. Yeah, all connected. All exactly. <laughs> Thank you so much. Bye. Okay. Have a great day. Bye. Bye.